On July 28, 2020, Mr. Beast opened a Minecraft server for the sole purpose of filming a video. After having thousands of people join and getting the footage they needed, Beast would abandon the server, and almost three years later, in his absence, it has slowly transformed into a full-on anarchy server. An entire subculture formed around it in hopes that Mr. Beast would one day return, but he never did. Despite the original video having over 22 million views, this server's player count has dropped to zero. The fact that Mr. Beast had an abandoned Minecraft server just sitting out there in the wild was fascinating to me, especially since it was anarchy, so I had to explore the place for myself. I also wanted to learn more about its unique history and how it even ended up like this in the first place. At one point, the player base was so desperate for Beast to return that they broke a Minecraft world record on the server just to try and get his attention. This whole place is weird, quirky, and after learning the history, kind of depressing. So join me as we explore, survive, and cover the events of Simpcraft. Mr. Beast's abandoned Minecraft server. As I mentioned earlier, in 2020, Mr. Beast filmed a video of him and thousands of his fans joining a Minecraft server to see how long it would take to crash. The footage was pure chaos. But after filming was over, many of those fans started playing on the server legitimately. Mr. Beast's team actually decided to leave it open as an anarchy server, where you could hack, grief, and steal to your heart's content. But there was a catch. Because the server was associated with Mr. Beast and his brand, you could get banned for spamming offensive things in the public chat. But otherwise, it was anything goes. Groups quickly formed and soon, the server had a massive conflict called the Great Simp War. And that's not a joke, that's the actual name, where players fought for control of spawn. During this conflict, it was typical for 150 players to be online at any given time, so it was quite active. Participants used every advantage they could to come out on top. The community of Mr. Beast fans were convinced that all of this activity would cause him to return. As time went on though, and the conflict eventually ended, the average player count started to decline. Pretty soon, the entire place was a ghost town. In one final attempt to get Mr. Beast to return, a group on the server attempted to break the world record for largest pyramid ever built on a survival Minecraft server. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and Beast never returned. So here we are today, with the server abandoned, zero players online. I was intrigued, so for the journey, I gave myself three objectives. Escape, spawn, and survive, visit ruins and historical points of interest, including ones from the original video, and then find the world record pyramid that was built in a desperate act to get Mr. Beast to return. One of the builders told me that at the top of it was something I needed to see for myself. I logged in for the first time and sure enough, the spawn area was completely griefed. I was actually around 600 blocks away from 00, zero so I would stay away until I had some supplies. Now, normally when I explore servers, I use an alt account to not attract any attention, but since zero players were online, I could actually use my main account for once. As I made my way out, I was careful to conserve my hunger meter. Luckily, I found a fish swimming nearby that I could use for food. I came across a skeleton horse trap that had not been activated yet, so I made sure to stay away from it. The area looked like a wasteland, but with the sun starting to set, I had to get serious. I came across some animals I was able to kill for food, wool, and leather. But with enemy mobs starting to spawn, I was in trouble. After a skeleton ambushed me, I thought it was over, but through sheer luck, I was able to escape to the safety of a nearby obsidian structure. I ate some of my food and took a breather. Not far away, I could see that there were some ruins that actually had a large amount of trees. I had really lucked out. I made my way over and began harvesting wood. With the sun rising, I had survived my first night on this abandoned server. Pretty soon, I had basic survival gear that would help me get around somewhat safely. Now it was time to start exploring the historical points of interest, starting with 00. zero. As I made my way closer, what had originally been normal-looking biomes were now unrecognizable. 
At the very center of the server, I found a massive obsidian structure and to my surprise, all of the platforms surrounding it were made of solid netherite. But sadly, I didn't have strong enough tools to actually harvest it. It was clear that a duplication exploit had been used to create all of this, as manually obtaining this much netherite was not realistic, since it's pretty hard to find. But after this, I made my way a few hundred blocks to the south, where Mr. Beast's original bedrock structure was supposedly located, the same one that he used to trap his fans in the video. As I got closer, the entire thing was covered in a massive pile of rubble, with most blocks being bombed out all the way down to the bottom layer. I carefully made my way up, and sure enough, underneath all of the cobblestone, the structure survived, looking very different from the original normal looking terrain. In fact, if it weren't for the fact that a lone fox was just staring over the ruins, you'd have no idea this was originally a taiga biome. The Great Simp War must have really been wild. After exploring the area a bit more, it was time to see this alleged world record pyramid that was built. One of the builders had given me coordinates, and it was thousands of blocks out on a diagonal highway, so I started making my way towards it. While still in the spawn region, I encountered what I could only describe as a turtle circle. This server had some weird spawning mechanics. I felt bad for them, so I was able to free them from their glitched prison, and they swam off. Maybe one day they'll return to this beach as FitMC subscribers, who knows? But I made my way back towards the spawn base again for some extra supplies. I killed some enemies and looted old items from a chest. As I got farther away from spawn, it still looked like an anarchy server with plenty of weird structures around. I found a sheep that would kindly donate a third piece of wool that I could use for a bed. I saw some ruins on a hilltop and killed the zombie that had taken up residence. It dropped a nice pair of boots which I quickly put on since I had no armor. I got settled in and was finally able to craft a bed. Being the only person online, I could actually skip the night, a rare occurrence on most anarchy servers. After a quick rest, I moved on. I saw some obsidian art in the sky which reminded me a lot of 2B2T. It's funny how trends from there make their way to other anarchy servers. As I continued towards the Axis Highway, I encountered a jungle, but in the distance, there appeared to be an intact treehouse, but it was on fire. Since I wanted to see the place before it burned down, I quickly made my way towards it. When I entered, I noticed something strange. The fire was not spreading. For some reason, fire spread was off. Whether it was intentional or a server glitch, I had no idea, but at least I could take a look around safely. I found an item stash, but only zombie flesh remained in the chests. It was neat seeing what players had built, but it was time to continue on. I found a small survival shelter that had been thrown together. In the basement there were some supplies. Since the server was abandoned, I didn't feel too guilty about taking them. Continuing by boat, I kept seeing builds that were either unfinished or full-on griefed. But the terrain was finally looking like a normal Minecraft server out here. Well, mostly anyway. But without players, the whole place still had a weird vibe. I made it to the primitive Axis Highway where I found something that gave me a little deja vu. But now that I was on the highway, I had several thousand blocks ahead of me to walk. In a frozen ocean biome, I actually had to sidestep some polar bears since they had a cub with them. If I got too close, they would have become aggressive and with so little armor, it was not a risk I wanted to take. Further on down the road, walking directly over an ocean monument was a mistake, as guardians almost murdered me. I had to hop in the water to break the line of sight of their beam attacks. This was one of the few times on an anarchy server where mobs were a greater threat than hackers. I approached a rest stop and read a sign about the primitive highway that had been constructed in 2020, so it was almost three years old at this point. Impressive. A little farther down the road, someone had put their bed directly on the highway itself. You would never see something like this on 2B2T. This was just a spawn trap waiting to happen. But the fact that it wasn't destroyed may be proved otherwise, especially now with the server abandoned. There were more player signs on the way to the pyramid, as well as griefed bases right off the highway. We had to be getting close. Eventually, the road became nothing more than a trail of blocks on the terrain itself. But suddenly, it came into sight. 
a giant pyramid made entirely out of obsidian with a massive crater bombed out all the way down to bedrock. It was so massive that even using FreeCam, I couldn't even see all of it in render distance. Floating around the crater were the remnants of the TNT bombers used to destroy the terrain. I made my way around the edge of the chasm looking for a safe way down. I eventually just used a water bucket to get to the bottom. From there, I started climbing. I wanted to make it to the top to see what was so special. And it was quite the climb. In fact, at one point my render distance was too high and the pyramid actually crashed my game. So I rejoined with a smaller render distance. Eventually, I safely made it to the top where I found a single block of bedrock, something that normally cannot be placed like this. It turns out that this block was put here by a member of Mr. Beast's team and the admin of the server, Pluto Ren. Even though the builders couldn't get Mr. Beast's attention, this block was given as a consolation prize for supposedly breaking the record. And I have to admit, even admiring all of the builds underneath, this probably was the largest pyramid I'd ever seen in Minecraft. But since the builders failed in their original goal of bringing Mr. Beast back, and the server was now abandoned, this whole thing was a bit somber. The idea of an entire subculture being built around a cult of personality on what was supposed to be a temporary server for a one-off video was a truly unique thing to document. Exploring Mr. Beast's abandoned Minecraft server was definitely a unique experience, and it makes me wonder what other sorts of strange digital spaces might be out there? Well, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and follow my socials. So take it easy, FitFam, and stay alive out there.